So a few slides on how high frequency works. Obviously, it's very important to understand how it works, but at the same time, I wouldn't put too much of uh, intense reading about this because irrespective of uh, how much time you spend, ultimately, you just need to have a reasonable idea. So I've tried to simplify it and covered only certain aspects of it. It's not very in-depth for this aspect. High frequency basically is a frequency more than 120 breaths and in general terms we use a frequency of 5 to 20 hertz. Uh, each uh, hertz is 60 breaths so 5 hertz is 300 breaths and 20 hertz is 1200 breaths so anywhere in that range. So uh, it involves a delivery of very small tidal volumes often less than the anatomical dead space at very fast rates. The continuous distending or mean airway pressure which is applied to the lung uh, around which the pressure wave or the amplitude oscillates. The co constant mean airway pressure determines the lung volume as the lung recruitment and maintenance is there, we will discuss it later. The alveolar surface area available for gas exchange is part of this as well and the pulmonary blood flow is uh, dependent on this as well. If you over distend the lungs, obviously you are going to cause uh, problems and uh, dead space ventilation. And if you are having atelectasis, you have shunt. So we will be discussing this when we deal with lung recruitment. But remember that the oxygenation is depending on the mean airway pressure and the lung distension. In an appropriately recruited lung, the tidal volume and the minute ventilation and thus the rate of carbon dioxide clearance or DCO2 is determined by amplitude of the pressure wave, which is also reflected as delta P. Uh, the absolute inspiratory time which is defined by frequency uh, and the I time, the E ratio of the pressure wave as well as the mechanical properties of the intubated respiratory systems for example whether you gave surfactant, what is the state of the lung disease, whether it is recruitable or whether there is a non-recruitable lung problem like pulmonary hypoplasia and also the uh, nature of the tube, the resistance of the circuit, the complaints of the circuit, whether there is a leak around the tube. So all these parameters are important at this stage. When it is applied optimally for a given set of lung conditions, high frequency uh, provides optimal uh, effective oxygenation and ventilation and it potentially minimizes associated lung injury. Uh, so we will be reviewing why it minimizes lung injury in the next few slides as well. In terms of mechanism of gas transport, multiple mechanisms have been described and it obviously plays a differential role at each level of the airway. Uh, turbulent mixing, which is mainly in the upper airways, uh, the trachea and the bronchi. Asymmetric velocity profiles, uh, also called as uh, non-linear uh, streaming. So for example, we have the uh, gas coming in with the increased velocity. So we have the conical shape, the uh, gas coming out uh, with more carbon dioxide comes in the periphery and this asymmetrical flow pattern causes the mixture of gases. Uh, we have Taylor dispersion where uh, with the velocity, the uh, sorry, the uh, faster end or the active end of the gas becomes a conical shape, so uh, the tip is further across. And we have the exhaled gas which goes into these areas and the gas mixture at these expanded surfaces happens. This is the Taylor exp uh, dispersion. We have uh, Henderson's molecular diffusion. When the cone uh, is active and projecting, the the end of it reaches further into the airway and when the flow stops during the end of inspiration, the diffusion happens to the sides of the airway. So this opening up happens and that is Henderson diffusion. Uh, we also have uh, Langrenian drift uh, where uh, the position of the gas molecule changes. So this reflects a turbulence. The pendulift effect is where uh, uh, there is a differential time constant of different parts of the airway. For example, here the time constant is short and the alveolus fills up quickly. Here the time constant is relatively longer and it's still not filled. So this uh, time constant uh, which is shorter, the lung inflates and starts exhaling and during the exhalation phase part of the gas instead of going out goes into the other part of the lung with a longer time constant. So this heterogeneity of the lung is uh, manifested and the pendulift effect may help with gas diffusion as well. So uh, non-linear mean streaming is a non-zero average velocity of a gas flow at a given location. Suppose you look at this particular point in the airway, what is the velocity is a non-linear mean streaming. Langrenian drift is a net motion of a gas parcel over an inflation cycle. Suppose inflation is starting here and in the center the gas particle moves further away. 
and in the periphery it moves less. So this is Langrenian drift and according to the level of drift the gas exchange happens to that extent. So the gas transport arising from these mechanisms is also a function of the ratio of inertial to the viscous forces. Uh, as we know inertia is the resistance to movement and uh, it's proportional to the gas flow. The faster the gas flow, the less the inertia and uh, it reduces at each subsequent generation of the airway from the trachea to the alveoli. The reduction in the inertia is because of the increased cross-sectional area as you progress uh, when you go to the smaller bronchioles, for example, there are so many of them, so the cross-sectional area increases, so there is more room to go in and the inertia is less. So it reduces the flow rate and flow velocity to go into these lower chambers. The viscous forces on the other hand are inversely proportional to the airway vessel diameter. So the narrower the airway, the higher the viscous resistance and so uh, this contributes to a greater part in the distal airways. So this uh, gives you an illustration of uh, how uh, different gas transport mechanisms are operating at different levels of the airway. Turbulence will occur uh, mainly in the trachea and the primary bronchi. So this is the turbulent gas and this leads to turbulent diffusion. Non-linear mean streaming, tailor dispersion and Langrenian drift operate in the upper and middle layers. The pendulift effect comes in between the distal and the middle parts. Molecular diffusion is effective in the viscous dominated flows near the terminal bronchioles. You also have collateral ventilation between the alveoli, the uh, Langerhans uh, pores of Langerhan and uh, Kuhn. And uh, obviously the pendulift effect is illustrated here as well. So remember that uh, each level of this uh, interferes and obviously if you have an obstruction in the airway or an atelectatic segment it will affect gas exchange as well. So adequate lung recruitment, as much homogeneity as possible, it's not possible to be fully homogeneous so it matters as well.